In this video, we continue our survey of Lewis dot structures by drawing the structure of the ion uh, thiocyanate, which is this one. Okay, that is the ion uh, thiocyanate. As always, we uh, count valence electrons um, and then try to draw the Lewis dot structures. Uh, the carbon atom is central in the structure, and then the sulfur and nitrogen atoms are terminal. And this how has a negative charge. All right, so let's get started here. Uh, uh, electronic uh, configuration is going to be uh, neon 3s2, 3p4, and that is helium 2s2, 2p2, helium 2s2, 2p3. So we have six valence electrons and four, that's 10, uh, five, that's 15, and then we have one more, that's a total of 16 uh, valence electrons that we have to uh, uh, build that Lewis dot structure. Okay, the first uh, electrons go to draw bonds between the central and the terminal atom, and that is 12 electrons left over. All right, uh, and then we take these 12 electrons that are left over, and uh, we use them uh, to draw lone pairs in the terminal atoms first. Okay, so we have here two electrons, four, six, and then two, four, six, that is a total of 12 electrons that I've put as, as long pairs, and that means that I have none left over. Okay, so uh, and now we try to verify if we have octets for each of the atoms involved, and we see that for the terminal atoms, we do have octets, but for the central atom, we do not have an octet. That's a, uh, that carbon atom only has four electrons in its vicinity. So somehow we're actually going to have to uh, figure out a way uh, to take those long pairs and make multiple bonds so that that carbon atom can reach an octet. And here you can see that there are many, many possibilities to do that. For example, uh, sulfur uh, can uh, uh, take one lone pair and make a double bond. Uh, that still will give me uh, uh, a sextet for carbon, so maybe you can have another lone pair, so that will be a triple bond. Uh, nitrogen can do the same thing, and finally, you can have that sulfur can form a double bond, but then nitrogen can also form a double bond. Okay, so notice that there will be here a few resonant structures, uh, and then we're going to have to t uh, uh, tell which one has more merit. Okay, so let's get started. Uh, the first thing what I'm going, that I'm going to do is, is uh, assume that uh, uh, there's multiple bonds to carbon uh, caused by uh, these lone pairs acting as bonds mm -hmm. between sulfur and carbon. Right, so uh, let's see if we can do that. Uh, SCN, here you would have charge, and then uh, the nitrogen part we're not going to uh, do anything with, and then is the sulfur part that we're going to use to build multiple bonds, right? So I can take that, and that is a double bond. That's still not satisfying, because while well, you have an octet with sulfur, that is still only a sextet, so I can take this other one and then form a triple bond. In this case, you have a resonant structure that does satisfy uh, the octet rule for all of the atoms. Okay, so that would be a legit lose that structure. All right, uh, the same thing you can do uh, with nitrogen. All right, so you can go nitrogen, say S, C, N. All right, so that is our parent structure. And then see how can we can uh, involve those lone pairs in nitrogen to form multiple bonds. All right, so this lone pair can form here, uh, can be used to form a double bond, and that would be a triple bond. And in, this case, in that case, you have that each of the atoms has an octet, and that seems to be also a legitimate Lewis dot, dot structure. Now, there's an intermediate uh, between these two in which you're going to have double bonds uh, to sulfur and nitrogen. Okay? So that will be uh, sulfur, carbon, nitrogen. Right? And then you would have that is where we start. All right, and then uh, we take one of these lone pairs to form a lone bond, uh, a double bond, take that pair to form a double bond. And in this case, you also have that uh, uh, everybody, everybody satisfies the octet, right? All the atoms uh, uh, have an octet, and that's also a legitimate Lewis dot structure. Okay, so we have three resonant structures, but something interesting happens here, right? Unlike the cases of ozone and nitrate that we have reviewed in a prior video, in this case, those resonant structures are actually not identical, right? Notice how here you have a triple bond between sulfur and, and carbon, and that is a triple bond between uh, carbon and nitrogen, and here you only have uh, a double bond between each of the pairs, right? So it turns out that there is a way 
that you can uh, 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 try to see which one of these uh, Lewis dot structures would be more appropriate. And that is by using the concept of the formal charge. Okay? The formal charge uh, is a way to uh, figure out what the charge of the items in these structures would be. And we do do that uh, by comparing the number of electrons that the atom has uh, by itself, right? Uh, those will be the balanced electrons, and the number of electrons that belong to the atom once it is in the Lewis dot structure. Okay, so we know that the balanced electron of sulfur uh, is going to are going to be six. Those for carbon are going to be four, and those for nitrogen are going to be five, right? So in these structures, if uh, for example sulfur would to have uh, seven electrons there will be one more that you will have in the balance, and that would mean that sulfur would have a negative one form of charge. Okay? Or, if there's a, a resonance structure in which you have five electrons for sulfur, then there would be one fewer than what you have in the balance, and that would mean that you have a plus one positive charge for uh, that sulfur atom. All right, so what we're going to do is then uh, calculate the formal charges for each one of the atoms in these three structures, and then we will see uh, uh, how we can determine which one of the structures is uh, the most likely by uh, uh, just thinking about those formal charges. All right, so let's start here. Notice that uh, we can now calculate how many uh, electrons belong to sulfur outright. Right, we have here a lone pair, and those are not being shared with anything, so those two electrons belong outright to the sulfur. And here you have six electrons between carbon and, and sulfur, but those are being shared. So really, uh, only half of those six electrons uh, uh, belong to sulfur outright. Right? So that means that this, in this structure you have two plus three, five electrons uh, are for sulfur, and we'll, we'll compare those five electrons to what you have here in the balance. That means that you actually have one fewer electron uh, uh, in, in uh, sulfur right here than in the atom separated. That would mean that the, uh, the formal charge of sulfur is plus one for this particular structure. Okay? Let's try to do the same thing here for carbon. Carbon has four electrons in the balance, and uh, in this Lewis dot structure you have uh, uh, four bonds. Okay, that's a total of eight electrons, but only half of those belong to carbon. That means that you actually have four uh, electrons uh, for carbon in these Lewis dot structures. You have four in the balance, so that means that uh, the formal charge of carbon would be zero in that resonance structure. Okay? And finally we can go to nitrogen and say, well, we have five balanced electrons uh, uh, in nitrogen, and then in this uh, Lewis dot structure, you're gonna have two, four, six, and then half of this pair, so there's gonna be a total of seven uh, electrons belonging to nitrogen. Compare seven to five, and there is an excess of two electrons. That means that you have uh, a minus two formal charge for nitrogen right there, okay? So uh, the rest, uh, uh, in the next couple of minutes, we're actually going to be calculating those formal charges for every atom in these other two resonance structures. Okay, so if you want to practice this uh, uh, on your own, you can pause the video and try to uh, uh, determine what those formal charges will be, and then see if actually that agrees with what we're going to be doing. All right, so uh, let's uh, think about uh, the formal charges in this structure. Notice that sulfur would have two, four, and then half of these four, so two, four, six, uh, there's six in the balance, so sulfur has a formal charge of zero in that structure. Carbon is exactly the same as here, right? Uh, four bonds, no lone pairs, so that means four electrons. Uh, here you have a formal charge of zero on carbon. And for nitrogen, you have two, four, uh, and then half of four, so two, four, six, and that is one more than you have uh, in the balance, so that is a formal charge of minus one. All right, last uh, Lewis dot structure. Uh, for sulfur, we have two, four, six, and then one of these seven. Uh, you have six in the balance, so that is a minus, minus one uh, uh, formal charge for sulfur. Carbon, uh, much as before, is going, only going to have, well, it's not going to have any formal charge, zero. And then nitrogen, now here we have two, uh, three, four, and five. Five compared to five, that happens to be uh, zero. Okay, something important uh, happens here, and that is that first, the sum of all of the former, former charges is identical to the total charge of the species, right? Add uh, plus one minus two, that is a minus one, that is exactly the uh, charge of, the, of this uh, uh, thiocyanate ion. 
here, uh, the total sum of formal charges is minus 1, agrees with that. Sum of formal charges minus 1 agrees with that. Okay, so that is something that you can use as a, as a test to see if you uh, uh, consider uh, correct formal charges here. Now, uh, the, the importance of formal charges is that it allows you to discriminate uh, among various possible resonance structures and determine which one is, is the best. Okay, so the best Lewis dot structures are those that have the lowest possible formal charges. Okay, so here we see that this uh, has formal charges of plus one and minus two. Those are really large compared to what you have right here, in which most atoms have a zero formal charge and only nitrogen or sulfur have a negative one charge. Okay, so we can say that this structure is actually not going to participate a lot in reality. Okay, again, because the formal charges are just too, too large. Usually successful Lewis dot structures are those that have uh, formal charges of either zero or plus minus one in most of the atoms. Okay, so again, we can see that this is not nearly as good as those two. Now the question is, which one of these is better? Right, and the difference is very clear. In this case, you have a negative formal charge on nitrogen, and here we have a negative formal charge on sulfur. So which one of those is more likely? Well, uh, we can actually sort this out using electronegativity. We know that nitrogen is more electronegative than sulfur. Uh, the polling electronegativity, electronegativity values are 3.0 and 2.5 for sulfur, so it would seem that uh, this actually looks like a more reasonable Lewis dot structure. Again, uh, so if we have to choose one of these three structures as representing reality, the one that seems best, according to formal chart, would be uh, that uh, central structure. Okay, so in this video we have uh, drawn the Lewis dot structure for the ion uh, thiocyanate, and then we have introduced the concept of formal chart, uh, how you calculate formal chart, and then how, we, how do you use formal charges to determine uh, which one of a set of possible Lewis dot structures is the one that is more reasonable.